so good morning we are going to improve the quality of our planetary images from this to this by using the freeware program WinGPOS. Hello and a warm welcome to the Refreshing Views Observatory. My name is Mark Radici. Now planetary imaging relies on using a high-speed video camera to record many thousands of video frames and then using free software to reject the ones blurred by the atmosphere, stacking the sharp ones. The problem is that Jupiter itself is also rotating so we're limited to about two minute video captures before Jupiter's own rotation blurs that image. So we'll take a number of two minute videos of Jupiter, we'll stack them, we'll sharpen them and then we'll use WinDupos to stack those stacks one on top of the other. And the benefit of that means that we've got a longer capture time which means we've got a better signal to noise ratio which means that basically we can process it more and reveal those finer details. So I'm going to switch over to the laptop and show you my workflow to use WinDupos. So I've already made a video showing the steps I use to capture a video, set the telescope, all that sort of thing. I'll just do one reminder, which is to go into Fire Capture and in Settings, Capture Settings, you need to set it for Use Universal Time and use Win Dupos file naming. Right, I've set it for 120 seconds, so two minute capture. That's the maximum we want to do. We want the telescope acclimatized to ambient, let it cool down to whatever the ambient air temperature is. We need to make sure we've got a good focus and we need to make sure the telescope is collimated. So we'll source and stack in auto stack it. So we've got auto stack it, we'll set it to a planet place the APs in the grid and use multi-scale and close to APA. So 100 APs, 104 pixel squares, all different sizes, reduces that chance of mosaic in 500, 1000, 2000 and press stack. So there we have it, we've stacked all our frames. Next thing we're going to do is pop it into Registax. Let's open up Registax. Right. And then I have this saved as a default Jupiter linked wavelets. That's my setting, just RGB balance, auto balance. There we go. So the key point here is that I slide the top one across to about three quarters of the way across, use those sharpen and denoise, but I use the linked wavelets tool here. Almost looks like a smiley face with those two little dark barges and the little festoon in the middle. So I have a whole folder now of linked wavelets captured on the 21st of July 2021 from 0155 Universal Time to 0304 Universal Time. Now if you remember back in Fire Capture, we set the settings to capture in Universal Time and capture in WinGPOS format and that's what this is. So let's open up WinDupos. So we got program, celestial body, Jupiter, recording image, measurement. So an open image. Now this is the beauty of saving in WinDupos format that it's recognized the time. If you haven't saved it, if you just use your default settings, you will have to type this all in manually. And the key point to remember is that the time here is in decimal minutes. So that's not 60 seconds, that's six tenths of a minute. Now what WinDupos is going to do, it's going to interpret the image and then use this circle to sort of break it down into pixels. So what we need to do is line this circle up with the planet disk. And the easiest way to do it is press F11. And it has a think, and there it is. So it knows where the North Pole is, it knows where the preceding size, that's a limb that's disappearing round. There's also a little circle there, and that's the moon Io. Io was transiting across the surface of Jupiter. So I leave all these the same. So the F11 key only works with Jupiter. So if we're looking at Mars or Saturn, you have to do this manually, and that's the up down keys, move it around, left, right, do that and the page up, page down, magnify, page up, page down, reducing size, 
fat space rotates at 180 degrees and the N and the P rotate clockwise and anti-clockwise respectively. So open image, F11 lines everything up, image, save, and we'll save it in a new folder called WinGPOS. Save. Open image, we'll do all of these, and you can see the small rotation there. That's why you can't stack pictures on top of pictures, uh, these two, you know, even if they're only a few minutes apart. So you can see why having things saved in the WinGPOS format is so beneficial if you have a number of these video files I've got to type in the time and the date each time you take a video but having this in the WinGPOS format means that WinGPOS automatically reads the date and the time so where do we get to number 22 next and the last one 41 there you can see IO coming off there save it was actually quite a cool sight to see in the telescope and watch it on the monitors watching I appear off the side of the limb. Did I say that? Yes, I did. And then the last one, I think it was 41. Oh, sorry, three or four. And there's IO there. F2, save. So that's all our images read. Let's close that down. And we'll go to Tools, Derotation of Images, Edit, Add. And I'm literally going to tell it to open all of these open excellent and this little picture here tells you how the image is all spread out that's obviously the last one here and it's going to derotate them down to the middle timestamp so you've got various things you can set up that's going to be our reference time 224 that's where it's going to be saved um, I don't know why the observers L but anyway that's the image size 606 pixels again you can adjust that accordingly a ping you can make it a north at top south at top uh, let's do north at the top and we'll compile the image. It has a think. And there is our derotated image with north at the top set at 224. So that's the middle timestamp there. So here are the two pictures alongside each other. That's just one of the images we've stacked together. And if I compare that to that, you can quite clearly see the image difference ignoring the rotation a little bit grainier and so that's because we've stacked 11 images one on top of the other three times improved the signal to noise ratio and that's why derotating images has such a benefit to planetary imaging even though jupiter itself is rate rotating so it doesn't look too bad so if we do a filter noise dust and scratches just remove any residual noise so duplicate layer, overlay, filter, other, high pass. You can really see the detail start to come out. Eight pixels is probably a bit too high. Let's go down to four. But again, that's a step change again in quality. If I turn that layer off, you can see there we really bring out some of the contrast. So if I compare a high pass filter of a stack of 11 with the original, you can see there how much more sharpening and processing we can get out with that, bit, with, with that stack of 11, which you can't do unless you've derotated in WinGPOS to take into account Jupiter's own rotation. So I hope you found that useful. If you've got any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to ask. And please subscribe, and I look forward to bringing you more videos as we explore the night sky. Well, looking out the window once the sky is actually clear. Have a lovely day and I'll see you in the next video.